Ah, there's nothing like the open sea. Right, Palm? Right, Father. But this is a lake, not a sea. Oh, yes. Well, that's even better. Ah, the open lake. It doesn't sound quite the same, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Dad! Dad! What's up, son? Victor's not feeling very well. I think he's seasick. He can't be seasick. We're on a lake. Okay, okay, so he's lake sick, all right? Take the wheel for a few minutes, son. I'll get the first aid kit. Take all the time you want, Father. This is great. What's wrong, Victor? I think I ate too much. Lunch. He did eat a lot, Dad. He had four sandwiches, two plates of salad, three apples, and a chocolate bar. And five root beers. I'll give you something to calm your stomach, Victor. Oh, yeah, and four bags of potato chips, too. All right, Alexander, you're making me sick. Thank you, sir. I'm never overeating again. Never. I mean it. Whoa! Did we hit something? I think something hit us. What was it, Father? Flora, don't go near the edge. Baba, what was it? I don't know, Celeste. It was... It looked like... a sea serpent. A sea serpent? A sea serpent? A sea serpent? But that's not possible, is it? What did the sea serpent look like, Father? Well, it was... Did it have claws and fangs and slimy scales and a forked tail? Did it breathe fire, Dad? Did it have a hump? Did it... I didn't exactly see. Oh, well, Alexander, everybody knows that sea serpents aren't real. Good joke, King Valbar, but can we go back now, please? What's wrong, Victor? He ate too much. Oh, my stomach. Oh. All right, Victor, we'll head back now. But what about the sea serpent? I must have pulled in too close to Larkin's Lagoon. We probably hit a reef. And what I saw must have been a, a wave or a log or something. A wave? But, Dad... It couldn't be a sea serpent, could it? I don't know, Palm. <laughs> Sea serpents aren't real. Everybody knows that. If my dad said he saw a sea serpent, then he saw a sea serpent. Right, Pum? Right, Flora? Right. Come on. Your dad's just overworked. Maybe he's hallucinating. You know, seeing things. Pum, tell him. Tell Victor that dad's not hallucinating. Pum? Well, even if sea serpents are real, I think they'd have to be in the sea. And we were on a lake. <laughs> you can't have a sea serpent without a sea. See? <laughs> Maybe it was a lake serpent. Maybe it was an unsalted sea serpent. Ha! Salted or unsalted, they just aren't real. Well, I think we should go to Larkin's Lagoon first thing tomorrow morning and have a good look. Yeah! All right, I'll be there. Just to prove to you that this serpent is the kind you're never gonna see. <laughs> Gotta get home for supper. I'm starved. I don't know what it was. But I saw something out there, Cornelius. But what was it, Baba? We've got to find out if this thing is dangerous before someone else sees it and perhaps jumps to the wrong conclusion. Do you think you could get in touch with your friend Jacques? The underwater explorer? Yes, of course. But what should I tell him you saw? Tell him. Yes? Tell him to meet me by the lake, first thing in the morning. Of course, Baba, but what are we looking for? A sea serpent. Oh. A sea serpent? In a lake? My tusks? Come on, Alexander, give it up. I'm gonna get home in time for breakfast. I'm starved. 
Shh. The sea serpent will never come on if you're making so much noise. Don't be ridiculous. Even if sea serpents were real, they could never hear us. How do you know that? Because sea serpents don't have ears. Everybody knows that. I don't know that. You don't know anything. Sea serpents aren't real, therefore their ears aren't real. Everybody knows that. I don't know that. I know you don't know that. How do you know so much about sea serpents anyway? I know everything there is to know about everything that isn't real. It's my hobby. That's a pretty weird hobby. I know that. <gasps> What's the matter with these things? They just fogged up right... <gasps> I'm sorry, I was only kidding. You're real. You're very, very real. Father! Cornelius! Dad! We saw the sea serpent! It came out of the water, right in front of us. It's huge. It's green and slimy. It has red eyes and gigantic teeth. And the biggest ears you've ever seen! No kidding. It's probably listening to every word we say. It's a monster. A monster. All right. Let's not panic. Now, we don't know that it's a sea serpent or a monster. It's back! A submarine! You see, things are not always as they appear to be. Bonjour tout le monde! My name is Jacques-Yves Crouton. You can call me Jacques. And this is The Limbo. For 37 years, the Limbo and I have explored the mysteries of the Deep. The Deep? Exactement, the Deep. Jacques! Ah, it gives me great pleasure to see you again, Cornelius. And you too, King Babar. We will go exploring today, no? No, I mean, yes. Jacques is a famous underwater explorer. Oh, yeah! Wow. I've seen him on TV! Ah, children, like the little fishes, you should be in school. <laughs> <laughs> A little joke, no? Very little. Eh bon, perhaps later I will give the children a ride in my submarine. All right! Can we, can we do that? Yes, later. But for now, I want you all to go home so we can investigate this mystery. Aww. You must promise not to tell anyone about this until we've had a chance to find out what's out there. We promise! Victor? Yeah, sure, okay, sir. I won't say anything, no problem. Remember, not a word. Yes, sir! Gentlemen, come to the limbo, and together we will explore the mysteries of the dip. <laughs> That's a rather small door. <laughs> Isn't it? I knew it! Oh. It's a monster, Basil! A monster! No, Dad. It's not a monster. King Babar said... Never mind what King Babar said. He's afraid of monsters. But... But I, Rataxus, am afraid of nothing. Come along, Victor. We're going to hunt down and capture this dangerous underwater sea serpent monster. But, Dad... Ah, Victor, they haven't invented a monster big enough to scare your father. Don't forget, Your Highness. Lady Rataxus wanted to see you. Um, maybe we should go out the back way. The limbo drifted slowly downward like an abandoned cola can as we set forth on our journey in search of the infamous Celesteville Sea Serpent. As we sank deeper and deeper, my inexperienced crew were awe-stricken. This was their first exposure to such an exhilarating display of the sea's natural treasures. I can't see a thing. Babar and Cornelius were rendered speechless. They were as silent as two stone statues, so completely mesmerized were they by the underwater paradise that seemed to stretch endlessly in every direction. <sighs> Jacques? Our journey on the limbo had become one of unprecedented enchantment. Jacques! The underwater scenery was breathtakingly beautiful. Jacques! Jacques! Uh, we? The sea serpent! We must find the sea serpent! Ah, but we cannot find the sea serpent, Cornelius. 
Instead, we must wait for the sea serpent to find us. Oh. Drat, this window keeps fogging up. <laughs> There is your sea serpent, no? Yes! Are you all right, Cornelius? I think so. These sudden terrible dangers are to be expected when one dares to explore the mysteries of the deep. Oh. My tasks. What happened? I have cut all power aboard the Limbo. Now we will drift silently on the current like an empty, lifeless seashell. But why? Because now that the Limbo is quiet and dark, they will no longer be afraid of us. They? Baba, there's another one. And it's a baby. It's a rather large baby. But I must say, it's cute. <laughs> Have no fear, beachgoers! I, Rataxus, will hunt down this terrible, deadly sea serpent monster and keep the water safe for you and your families. I, not Babar, will be the hero, the savior, the fisherman of the year, and a terrific dad to boot. Yay! All right! Thank you! Thank you! <laughs> they love me. Hold on, son! <laughs> That's why the serpent charged at us. She's a mother. She was protecting her child. And Larkin's Lagoon must be her nesting area. Yes, Babar. It is one of nature's essential truths. In any species, a parent will risk its own life to protect that of its child. Once they have recognized that we mean them no harm, the sea serpents will be as gentle as a soft summer breeze. Beautiful. But we must get back and tell everyone that we have nothing to fear. They were afraid of us. So we bid adieu to the sea serpents, who now seem like old friends and the Limbo started the long journey home. Bonjour, tout le monde. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> My name is Jacques-Yves Crouton, and this is the Limbo. For 37 years, the Limbo and I have explored the mysteries of the deep. If you like, I will tell you about some of them. Oh. Ah, Cornelius, you forgot. You must always Limbo out of the Limbo. Dad, Cornelius, did you find the sea serpent? Yes, we found her. Her? Her. And we also found her newborn baby. A baby? The serpents are gentle creatures. We have no reason to be afraid of them. But Father, Rotaxis has gone out to hunt for the serpent. He's trying to capture it. My tusks, Baba. We must stop him. Dad, look! No! C'est impossible! Red Texas have accomplished what Babar was too frightened to attempt. I, Red Texas, have captured the terrible, deadly sea serpent monster. I, you, Red Texas, are a fool. That is no monster. It is nothing but a little baby. That's right, Red Texas. You've captured a harmless baby. And you've got to let it go now. You're endangering its life. Baby, what are you talking about? I, Rataxus, know a terrible, deadly monster when I catch it. Huh, we showed you guys. My dad's not afraid of monsters. Look, Victor, it's not a monster. It's just a baby. 
A baby? Mm -hmm. See, Victor, it's friendly. It likes you. You've got to tell your father to let it go. It can't survive like this. But I can't tell my dad what to do. He's my dad. You have to, Victor. Sea serpent! Sea serpent! What are they talking about? I've got the terrible, deadly monster. See ya! Okay, Dad. Oh, thank goodness. These monsters are even more dangerous than I thought. But Retaxes, they are not monsters. They're not dangerous. The mother only attacked because you had her baby. I know you're scared, Babar. Now stay here with the children. I'll go out and catch these deadly, terrible sea serpent monsters single-handedly. Come along, Victor. But, Dad! Father, what are we gonna do? Baba, come to the limbo, hurry! Go, Dad, hurry! Don't let Retaxis get the serpents! Retaxis is too far ahead. We'll never catch him. Have no fear, Cornelia is my very old friend. The limbo, she is herself one of the mysteries of the dip. There's the baby. Ah oui, but where is the mother? Dad, can we stop now, please? What? And let them think we're scared? Never! There's your taxis. He's here. Surface shock. We can cut off the entrance to the lagoon. Very good thinking, mon ami. Submarine at them! Let it right in front of us! Full speed ahead! My tusks! He's going to ram us! No, he's not that crazy, is he? Dad, stop! Victor, my only son, are you all right? Yeah, I'm okay, Dad. Could we give up now, please? You see, Retaxis, the serpent is really a gentle creature. She was only protecting her child. Are the days of the hunters so far in the past that you've forgotten what it's like to be the hunted? But I just wanted Victor to see that I wasn't afraid. I just wanted him to be proud of his father. Aw, oh, Dad, I was already proud of you. When I thought I'd lost you, son, well, I began to understand how the serpent must have felt when I captured her baby. Exactly, Retaxis. Now what we have to do is make certain that everyone else understands as well. Yes, Babar, you're absolutely right. In fact, I'd like to set up a joint rhino elephant patrol that would keep this lagoon a safe, quiet place for the serpents. Excellent idea, Retexes. Excellent. And so the Limbo set forth on one of her most important journeys ever. This time, my crew was very, very young. Suddenly, an immense variety of brightly colored fish swam by the observation window. <laughs> the children were mesmerized by the appearance of a strawberry jellyfish, followed closely by a peanut butter fish. These two fish are often found together. 
And then we were delighted to see a small school of golden candlefish, followed by, naturellement, a blowfish. We laughed. We found ourselves wondering, in the immenseness of this great sea, whose birthday it might be. Then I began to realize exactly what the sea represented for these little children. For them, the sea was a metaphor for their unfolding lives. Amidst all the risk, all the danger, there was so much beauty waiting to be discovered, if only they were willing to explore. Oh, look over there! This is fantastic, Jacques. Thank you. Believe me, the pleasure, it is all mine. Ah, the sea. I love the sea. The sea? Yes, Pom. The sea. But Jacques, this is a lake. What do you mean? Mm -hmm.